Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another episode of True Story Live. Tonight's episode is game night and fun talk. <laughs> so we're excited about that. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to read the description, Glenn's not going to be with us tonight. He has a, a doctor's appointment or a, a trip that he's on, so he's going to be away. But we look forward to having him back next week. So we'll do the best we can, even though we're we don't have the full gang here, um, so uh, hopefully still you'll enjoy the conversation and our gameplay, and we'll start that in just a few minutes. But as always, I'll introduce the uh, panel, and for me, my name is Jason. I'm the host of the broadcast, and joining me tonight are uh, two wonderful ladies which who whom I appreciate so much, and I'll start by introducing uh, Marisa of the Nez Lover Channel. If you haven't had a chance to, to grace her channel, go over and give it a visit. Uh, she usually goes up on Friday and Saturday night, uh, and she does artwork and conversation and, and singing. Also singing. Um, Jen and I were watching a show, and it had uh, Tie Yellow Ribbon around the Old Oak Tree song, and I turned to Jen and said, uh, that's one of uh, my favorite that Maurice does. There's actually many, so I don't know. It's, just, <laughs> it's hard, hard to choose. I was like, oh, yeah, it sounded familiar. And I was like, that's yep. where I know it from. Because yep. I hadn't heard it before Ness started singing it. Yep, there you go. Well, I had. I heard it when I was a kid. It's it's a pretty old song. Um, and it's it's been covered by other groups. But I, if I remember correctly, it was... Uh, Tony Orlando and Don that, that made it the most popular. Of course, Marisa can correct me if I'm wrong on that. But anyway, Marisa, welcome to the broadcast and take a minute to say hello to the peoples, please. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jen. Good evening or good day or whatever it is, wherever you're at, <laughs> where you're listening right now. Thank you for joining us here Sunday, Sunday, Sunday night on True Story Live. I'd like to say hello to everybody who's come in already, including Ariel Williams. Thank you, Ariel, for stopping by. It's one of my peeps. Hello, everybody who's joined us so far. Um, no, we don't have Glenn with us tonight. That's sad to say. But we will be missing him and thinking of him. And I'm sure he'll get a kick out of listening to the replay <laughs> at some point tonight. <laughs> Shout out to Glenn when he catches that replay. Thank you, everybody, for joining. I will be putting the links to some channels in the chat as the evening progresses. My people are usually pretty good about that. Um, if you come in and you decide you would like your link shared, please let us know. We will share it in the chat. If you prefer your link not to be shared, Please let us know, and we will respect your wishes. That being said, I'm looking forward to game night. We're going to have fun, fun, fun getting hip deep, and I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> hip, hip deep in the games. Who, who knows? Yeah, who knows where All it's going right. to go. All right. Thank you so much. Thanks, Marisa. And uh, my lovely wife, uh, Jennifer. Jennifer, take a minute to say hello to the peoples. How to do, peoples. Don't know who's going to join us tonight, but that's okay. It might just be the three of us and Jamie, and woohoo! <laughs> Party! Well, Glad we to have, be here, uh, as always. We have Ariel, and we also have uh, John Robb. All right. Yeah, so. Thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah, it's been a, a kind of lazy weekend after two weeks of hell. <laughs> Not actual hell, but just. Not actual hell. I've been having some neck and jaw muscle issues but i think that's uh i think it's been remedied or somewhat remedied so yeah therapy it really helps <laughs> yeah although exhausting it really helps it can be exhausting uh, for for those listening for the first time the person we're missing is our friend uh, glenn and he is from australia and uh he's usually with us but he'll be back next week uh, Jen, take a minute, say hello to the few people that we have in the chat, and then when more people come in, we will try to uh, make sure and make them feel welcome, too. Absolutely, and I do appreciate the times that you keep an eye on it when I don't throughout the show. Oh, sure. Um, Jamie Grace, we've got Jamie Grace here. Hey, Jamie. Hope you're doing well. Hope that your neck's feeling better. Annette Sandrock is here. Hey, Annette, our very own Nez, of course. Ariel Williams, hello, hello. John Robb. And I, is that it? I think so far. Yeah. Hey guys, glad you guys are here. Thanks for joining us and hanging out and having fun. 
yeah, we're going to have fun tonight, guys. Um, and we've got a better start than uh, last week. We only had one for like the first 15 minutes, if I remember correctly. So having, having you guys, I really appreciate it. Also, when we start the game, I would really love it if you guys would answer in the chat, if you uh, are willing to take the time to do so, and we'll try to read your answers, unless you don't want them read, just indicate that in the chat. If you just like to have them up there, fine. No problem with us whatsoever. All right. So, uh, Jen, tell everyone what we're playing. Okay. We're doing a little bit more exploratory surgery <laughs> on these, <laughs> these, these game cards. And it's called Tales, um, but also Life Story Interview Kit. It's kind of cool. Like I'm, I'm wanting us to get the Delve deck which I think uh, a couple of game nights ago we did it, but I had to like go onto the website and read them from the pictures of the products because yeah. I didn't have time to order them. Sure. <laughs> but they were, they were also very, very good questions. So these are just questions to get some discussions going. There's yep. a lot there. There might, if there's any repeats, if I pull any that are repeats, you guys just please give me a heads up. Yeah. Um, I think. Now, the good news oh, sorry. Go okay. ahead. I just was going to say, normally this particular deck, I didn't necessarily realize this when I got it, but it's it's a way to um, kind of interview your parents oh. to hear about um, their life story. And I guess oh. it's sort of an interview kit to get their history. It's a great way because, you know, I feel like our, the generations before us, they were very tight lipped about yeah. a lot of things that they went through and experienced. And so as we're getting more into these newer generations where people talk more and share more. I guess it's, a, it's just a great way of getting to know your parents and your grandparents. But honestly, the questions are good for anybody, you know, most of them. Um, it's, so, interesting yeah. that, it's interesting you mentioned that. I just want to uh, uh, touch on that briefly. Uh, my mom's dad, he was a pretty gregarious guy, but every once in a while, someone would ask him a question and he just straight up look at him and he, I, I love that he was direct and he would say, well, that's none of your business. Uh, and so it, it might've to me <laughs> been an uh, innocuous question in my opinion, but sometimes he would react like that. And I think you're absolutely right. That generation was more tight lipped. Um, yeah. And, unless they wanted to talk about something, they generally didn't. My other grandpa was even uh, my dad's dad he was even more tight lipped. He wasn't much of a talk. I mean, he did talk, you know, when we're sitting at the dinner table and stuff, but generally he, you know, when we go fishing, he wouldn't say much, you know, I, I could get him to talk. So could my mother, my gosh, when, uh, Linda went on the boat with us, she had a way of, uh, he loved her. Uh, and, and she told stories about when they first met and he beat her Aww. in chest and, and so for some reason, and my mom had this talent sometimes of uh, dragging uh, words out of a person. And she certainly did that with grandpa. Anyway, Aww. I just wanted to back your point up. I, I agree that that generation seemed to be more tight lipped. And I think a lot of it was um, they were taught that um, nobody needs to know everything about you. No one needs to yeah, know in your business. Story. Yeah. And now we've swung to the other side where it's like overshare is the normal. <laughs> well, yeah, overshare. Just, just say TikTok, and you definitely yeah. have overshare. We yeah. we were talking about this the other night, Jason and I. We watched Frasier. This is the second time around. We're watching Frasier together, and it's so funny because Marty Frasier's dad. He's from the older generation, and he also. It's just interesting how he his character is very, you know, not really great with emotion and crying women and. You know, yeah. I think the episode we watched, Frazier was having this dream yep. about, uh, what was his name? Gil, Gil. Chesterton. Yeah. <laughs> and he wanted to talk to his dad about it. His dad's like, no, I don't want to hear about nope, it. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were cracking up about that. It was funny. Yeah. And then last night we watched an episode, uh, you're talking about the hugging, like um, uh, she was upset because her boyfriend Daphne. broke up with her. Daphne yeah. was upset about her boyfriend breaking up with her. And, uh, of course, Niles is in love with her. So he was trying to give her a hug and, and, uh, uh, Frazier turned to Martin and said, well, do something. And so, you know, he, isn't that, is that the way it happened? Did Martin hug, hug her first and then Frazier? Yeah. 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 It was first Martin. And then he pawned her off onto Frazier. Yeah. She's and, uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. They just Poor Niles so, couldn't get in. <laughs> right. They just seemed so uncomfortable. 
and they uh, they uh, presented that in a, a good way, I thought. But yeah, you know, I love. I mean, even my dad has mentioned to me that he's uncomfortable with, you know, talking about emotions. Yeah. Um. Anyway. <laughs> and it makes sense. It makes sense that if they kept things on the QT back then, you know, yeah. uh, it would make sense that somebody sharing would be like, Oh, what, what, what? <laughs> this is yeah. really, they're going to, yeah. they're going to ask me something next. Ah, <laughs> yeah. well, my, my grandpa, I'm just grateful because I was afraid for his soul. Cause he, um, they did go to church, but, uh, I, I didn't, my, he was talking about my mom's dad. I, I didn't know if he was quote unquote saved or not. So every once in a while, and I prayed for him every night and uh, we would go there every summer and uh, we would uh, go for a skinny dip in the pool at night. They had a uh, in ground pool with a screened in area and you couldn't see anything. They were backed up against a canal. And so we would just go in there and swim and talk. And I would say, I would be so nervous and, and I, I didn't want to upset him, you know, but I would ask him, you know, Grandpa, do you, do you know Jesus? And he would say, well, and, and we have these nice conversations. Uh, and he didn't seem to get mad about that. And I appreciate that he didn't get mad at me for asking. I mean, I think he knew that I was just, you know, concerned about him. And I, I, I didn't want to experience heaven without him. And uh, but other things sometimes, <laughs> which is the what's none of your business. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Well, enough about all that. Let's uh, get started with the game. Uh, Jennifer, if you would do the honors and uh, start us off with our first question, we'll dig into this thing. Absolutely. And I just want to encourage everybody in the chat, if you feel comfortable sharing answers um, to any of these questions, please do it. This is not just a way you guys can get to know us better. It's also a way we can get to know you guys better. Oh. So we would love to have you answer the questions in the chat if you feel comfortable with that. I love that. Okay. All right. I think we might have asked this one before, and you guys can just refresh my memory if so. But what did you want to be when you grow up? When you grew up, we did ask that one. I talked about uh, first thing was a magician, and then yeah, okay, well, we'll pass on that one. Okay, next one. I like this one. I don't think I've talked about that or asked this one. Uh, what were your favorite childhood games or toys? Can I go first? Yeah, please. <laughs> oh my gosh, the eighties toys. Okay. Do any of you guys remember, and I don't know what it was called. I've looked it up and I have found it because sometimes they remake the old toys, but it was this penguin toy where it had these steps that these marching penguins would go up and then they would slide down the slide and then keep going up the steps mm -hmm. and then slide down the slide. Oh my gosh. Talk about a boring toy, but I just, I was enamored with it. I thought it was the funniest thing because they would kind of like wiggle back and forth as they walked. Yeah. Um, and then also for me, Barbies, My Little Ponies, and my brothers used to let me play with their G.I. Joes and their Star Wars uh, action figures. Oh, and Transformers. Robots. But there was a lot of toys that, oh my gosh, like Popples. I don't know if you guys remember Popples. They were like these little made-up animals that you could tuck. They'd have this pouch on their back, and you could turn them inside out and tuck them into their pouch. Oh, Glow yeah. Worms, Light Bright. Rainbow right. bright. <laughs> there were so many. Yeah. I, I know. That. So I could go on, but those are like the highlights. What about you guys? That's great. That's great. Let's ask Marisa first. I'll go last on this one. I enjoyed uh, my aunt and mother and uncle's hand-me-downs. Now, That's I lived with my mother's parents, so they were Depression era. And so I had like the real metal Tonka toys to play yeah. with. I had the metal John Deere equipment. Oh, oh boy, cool. stuff I wish I would have saved. Um, yes. The old Raggedy Ann and Andy. Um, my grandfather was a beekeeper. And what Ooh. I liked to do was whenever he'd get queens delivered from UPS, they would come in these little. Uh, wooden boxes with screens yes. on with the little like wax the queen paper. Cage. Yeah, yep. the queen cage. Well, I would get the queen cages and then I would paint them and make Barbie a kick ass stereo system. <laughs> oh, I that's so cool. Do not. I had, I was having fun with my art even back then. Sure, you were. Um, oh my gosh, that's cool. I liked making, you know, stuff for the dolls. I liked, uh, I liked being outside, and I loved to read. 
Yeah. I love music. I spent more time by myself reading or listening to music or playing on my grandmother's piano or organ. Sure. Um, that I did a lot of that. And hanging with Bobby, my best friend. So mm, those awesome. are what I enjoyed. I love it. Thank you, Marisa. That was, mm. that was good. Uh, I had a, a lot of toys, but my favorite, favorite, favorite toy, I uh, had um, what I called Super Friends, which were the uh, little nine-inch um, action figures that they made in the 70s. And it was like Superman, Batman, Robin. Um, the Incredible Hulk was one of my favorite ones. Uh, he was green, obviously, and had these, uh, you know, these um, kind of purple uh, pants that had a rope time. <laughs> um, and also the same size figures, the Star Trek, I had the Enterprise and things like that. Um, and I had some of those trucks too, the Tonka trucks. And I also had uh, uh, Hot Wheels uh, and I had a set. I had lots of Hot Wheels, and then I had, uh, they bought me racetrack. It was orange. The track pieces were orange. And yes, you, could, you, you click them, them together. And, and it had a thing that you you push the car through and had little rubber um, wheels on it, and it would shoot the car through it, and then it would come around the track, and it would start to slow down, and then it would almost, and then it would shoot it through again. So you could just keep pushing it through and watching it go around this track. And you could set it up and, you know, like prop it up on ends and, you know, like set some books up. So it had to go uphill. It wouldn't always make it around, though, depending on how you did it. Um, but that was one. But the, the one that I loved the most, because this wasn't something you bought from a store, my grandfather, out of wood and some, some uh, old car parts, made a dashboard. Uh, you know, it had a horn on it. It had a... Cool. Uh, turned a light on that was in the front and had a place to put keys. He had some keys in there and a steering wheel and a blinker. So it was, it was like a cross section of a car and we would set that up on a table and put a chair in it. And Shannon and I, and, and my friends and pretend that we were driving. And um, a lot of what we did was based on imagination. Yes. Shannon and I were very imaginative and we could use anything. Give us a cardboard box and we would either make a house out of it or we'd flatten it out and pretend that we were uh, floating on a river and um, it just amazing. I really had a great childhood. You know, oh I, gosh, I know so not cool. everybody did, but um, I mean, like anyone else that had their struggles and stuff, but I, I really enjoyed being a kid and I had lots of uh, things that I enjoyed playing. So that's so cool. It's amazing our imaginations that we had, still have, but had like two two things I thought of while I was reading the comments of people sharing. Uh, Annette had mentioned roller skating and ice skating. And I think I told you this story, Jason. Me and a friend of mine used to go to the park across from our neighborhood and we had our tennis rackets with the covers on them. Mm -hmm. And on a really, really windy day, we used to go out onto the tennis court or the basketball court with our roller skates, which isn't allowed now, but back then, you know, there's no issue with it. Right. Um, and we'd, we'd hold up our tennis rackets that had the cover and it acted like a sail. Oh, and the yeah. wind would like blow us around on our roller skates. That was super fun. And the other thing was um, like you had just mentioned the boxes. We'd also made forts out of like the, you know, the box that the washing machine or the dryer yep. came in, but there was something that somebody got. It might've been us, but it might've been a neighbor but we had this this gully, this huge gully ditch that was off to the side of the cul-de-sac and on our street. And one time it it rained so much that this gully down and here this drainage ditch was huge. It like flooded, and we took this big piece of styrofoam that somebody had something delivered on, you know, within a box, and we literally used it as a boat. Like it, it floated yeah. on the water, and we, we wow. would take turns on it. It was so much fun. Oh, that's cool. uh, so imaginations were great. Amazing. Yeah. Um, we did have a couple people comment and, uh, Jen read one from a net loved Lincoln logs, Tinker toys and Legos. And, uh, Jamie Grace says Legos and little, uh, winter games that you push a button to make the, Oh, the water go. games. Those yeah. were so fun. 
What did I say? Oh, I said winter games. I don't know. Winter games. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. <laughs> Do you guys remember sea monkeys? Did any of you guys have sea monkeys? Yeah, we had. Uh, oh my gosh, that was fun. And uh, uh, John said, uh, "Evil Knievel motorcycle and and ramp." Yep, but he I said had it's that his too. mom. Yep. His mom scratched off the evil stickers. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> no, <laughs> his mom in some ways was a little conservative. That's okay. <sighs> Um, and then and Nez actually mentioned the Spirograph set, which I totally forgot about those. They were so yeah, fun. We had that Spirograph. I also had the Evil Knievel. And so it was this pla plastic platform and it had a crank on the side. So you'd set the motorcycle on there and it would kind of you know, uh, stay in place. And then you'd crank the thing. And then when you cranked it enough, it would take off um, and you could jump ramps and stuff like he said. Um, John says, uh, he also had a uh, decent marble games at recess and, uh, 2000 army men. We used rubber bands to battle. Um, yeah, I had army men as well. I also had cowboys and Indians, which probably you couldn't have that now. It's probably racist or something, but, yeah. um, they were odd colors like yellow and green and red and, but they were plastic and, uh, yeah. I also I had uh, like uh, plastic fences. So I'd set up like a corral and I had a couple horses and I'd play um, cowboys and Indians. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot that we played with. I'm sure I'm forgetting something, but I just want to mention before we move forward, you're talking about uh, cardboard boxes, Jen, we would also do, and I'm sure everyone did this, but we did uh, took all the blankets and pillows in the house and made a fort. And then, uh, Sometimes we use the washer dryer cardboard boxes for that as an entryway. And we use uh, <laughs> card tables and coffee tables and dining tables. And oh we gosh. would move everything around and make this huge fort. It was totally dark inside. Yeah, I mean, you know, other than <laughs> they got to have the flashlights. <laughs> yep. Yep. And we made a fort. Oh, man. Oh, that's so cool. Forts were the best. Yep. Do you guys remember the plastic bubbles? Like, I can still in my memory smell the the chemicals that were in those things, but you'd put the little squishy stuff on the end of the plastic yes. straw and blow magic, the bubbles. They're kind magic of magic bubble. Yeah. Or some, yep. sometimes they were named plastic bubbles, but you know, we got ours and I don't know if any of you guys here on the panel or in the chat had this, but we had a magic, <laughs> magic store next to our, uh, the um, music store that was called echoes. And it was like tapes and CDs. Like when CDs came out, it was like a, big wonderful place to hang out at but there was a magic store around the corner and uh i remember having like uh my brother put on one of those hand buzzers but it like shocks you yeah and i just had a, a traumatic experience with that yeah. hand buzzer <laughs> but that's store. where we got the plastic bubbles yeah, but yeah trick store yeah. that was an interesting place excellent well we got a lot out of that one yeah go ahead and ask another one jen all right did you, did any of your, ah, we already know part of Nez's answer. Did, did any of your childhood friends remain in your life? Uh, I have one Dracula Corey. Yeah. She was a neighbor of mine when I was seven, eight, when we moved to Williamsburg in Virginia, mm -hmm. but that's the only one. Mm. Did you for see me. Dracula? Oh, I there's a pic. Her. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to send this picture to you, Nez. There's a picture of me and Corey, my best friend that lived next door. And she was Dracula that Halloween. And I was like a, like Paula Abdul slash punk rocker. I used to yeah. make up costumes, like just wear a bunch of different stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but we, there's a picture of us on our front porch. And so I showed it to Jason when we were dating. And so from then on, he's called her Dracula Corey. <laughs> 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 so he knows like what Corey I'm talking about. Yep. <laughs> Yep. Wow. Yeah. I knew there yeah. was a story, but wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm so gonna have to find that. <sighs> uh all right. Um go ahead, Marisa. Why don't you go? Well, my best friend Bobby, who frequents mm -hmm. our chat, bless her heart, she's been my best friend for over forty years. So thank God that at least one person has run away screaming that's known yeah. me that long and uh, i do have another friend uh whose all name is also jen and she's been coming to my streams occasionally and she may or may not have been there when you were painting and drawing with me 
uh, gen. So if I haven't introduced you to the other gen yet, I will. So that okay. gen has also known me for just about as long. Oh. So yeah, so I'm Very blessed fun. to have a few yeah. people who know me that long. I also am happy to say that I have a few. the The one I see the most is my friend Marcus, uh, Marcus Jones. And uh, when I was in second grade, the the second half of second grade, so I was like six, seven maybe, and yeah. we moved uh, to this area to Charlotte, and uh, my family was renting a house. And two houses down, so I did this. Some of you remember hearing me say that I liked meeting new people, so I would just walk around the neighborhood. And I, I, um, <laughs> on the, I don't remember the first day we were there, but close to when we moved in, I just went for a walk. And uh, Marcus came out of his house, and we just started talking. And I am still friends with him. We lost touch for a while in our twenties, um, not intentionally, but I just. Uh, you know, we just lost touch, but then I um, looked him up in the phone book, gave him a call, and since then, which is in the 90s, uh, we're close. And then on top of that, uh, when I lived in Michigan, there were two people, uh, kids, that I uh, played with. Uh, one's name is Mark, and the other is Todd. And I, I only met them in the first place because our parents used to hang out. Uh, so my parents would go over there and play cards over, uh, Todd's parents' house. And then, um, my dad didn't go over to Mark's mom's house, but my mom did all the time. They hung out, uh, and, um, they had gone to high school together, the, the, the two wives. And that's why we knew them. Um, now I'm Facebook friends with both of these folks. Uh, we talk on birthdays and stuff. I really feel bad that we're not you know, uh, still keeping up in the same way that I do with Marcus, but Marcus lives here. And I think that makes a difference. I feel like if yeah. I lived, if I lived in Michigan, I would be, I would make it a point, uh, to spend more time with them. But, uh, Mark, um, he, he and his mom moved to this area, um, uh, in the late eighties, early nineties. So it, you know, we were friends when we were kids and then we were friends in our, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there was a period of time where he was around. And then um, when he would come back to the area, we'd uh, make it a point to get together and stuff. But I haven't physically seen him in probably, I don't know, 10, 15 years. Um, yeah, birthdays and, you know, stuff like that. We talk. Um, That's cool. But yeah, there, there are a couple more that I remember that I occasionally say hello to. But the biggest one, the one I uh, see the most often is Marcus. He just lives in uh, Spartanburg. Uh, but uh, originally he lived in this area, so I saw him uh, more often. But he, he makes it a point. His mom is in a um, assisted living. I don't know if that's the term for it. Um, I get confused what's assisted living and what's just like a home. But yeah. uh, she, she lives close by, and even though he lives in Spartanburg, which isn't really that far, it's about an hour and a half from here to there. So he comes uh, uh, every other weekend or something like that to visit her, and we try to get together then. Okay. Yeah. All righty, righty. How oh, did you get a what? I just want to say hello to Bubba News, who popped in the chat while I was talking. Yeah, Bubba. Hello. Um, how, how did you get your name? Oh. I'll go first. Um, there's an actor, uh, and um, oh, I can't remember his name. Uh, well, it's Jason, obviously, but I can't remember his last <laughs> I name. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I'll have to look it up. Uh, he was an actor, Jason. Oh. oh, what was his name? Oh my gosh! Hold, I can't hold on, I'm gonna find it because. The, the the actress that my parents named me after, Jennifer Jones, they actually were in a movie together. The the actor that your parents named yeah. you after and then the actress my parents named me after. It was there really funny. Robarbs. Jason Robarbs. Okay. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's so funny. So they like that name. Uh, when I was born, there wasn't too many people named Jason, but then by the time I was in second, third grade, it seemed like there were Jasons everywhere. So 
like a lot of names that was popular during a certain period of time, late 60s, yeah. early 70s. But Jason Robarbs was born in 1922. So I, I think at the time uh, it was a pretty rare name, but it, it's not really anymore. In fact, I usually, when I have had jobs and stuff, there's almost always another Jason. So I use my last name instead of uh, Jason. But uh, coincidentally, at the place I work now, there's not another Jason in the whole office. So I just use my first name <laughs> just to keep it straight. Robards, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, he was a popular actor. So he already gave mine away. Jennifer Jones. And my maiden name is Jenner. So it was Jennifer Jenner. And, and I went by Jenny, so it was Jenny Jenner. <laughs> yeah. I, I crack think... up. I'm like, I missed my calling as a DJ. DJ Jenny Jenna. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> oh, man. I like Jennifer Jones. She was a, a decent actress, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was cool that we found out that those two actors were in a couple of movies together. I was like, yeah. oh, my gosh, that's cool. Yep. What about you, Nez? I was named after another actress by the name oh. of Marie, Marisa Berenson. Oh, my wow. mother loved Marisa Berenson. And oh, she God. had a, a role in Cabaret oh. uh, with uh, Liza Minnelli and Joel Grey and uh, right. Michael. I can't remember his last name, but you know who I'm talking about. Yes. Um, I believe she did a spread in that Playboy early in the 70s, but, you know, um, I don't think it was anything, you know, horribly distasteful. Yeah. But uh, she's a beautiful woman, very beautiful woman, wonderful actress, but that's whom she named me for. Oh, that is really cool. Character. I like your name because it's not common. No. Um, I like the more unusual names. Yeah. Thank you so much. And a lot of people will look at my name and pronounce it incorrectly. Even oh, if so? I pronounce it correctly <laughs> for them. From, they say Marissa. From, they'll say Marissa, yeah. Mariah, Marosha. I mean, you, you pick you a them. variant and yeah. it's been said. Sure. And, uh, but yeah, it's it's Marisa. It's a Marisa, Marisa. That's a beautiful name. <laughs> if you talk like Antonio Banderas, then you will never correct. <laughs> Marisa. <laughs> I love See? it. There you go. Jason, I don't know if you ran into this, but like growing up in school, there were so many Jennifers. Like at one point, I did some research on the year I was born and how many people were named Jennifer, and it's crazy. Yeah. And so growing up, it was like in class, it was like Jennifer A, Jennifer C, Jennifer R, Jennifer J, Jennifer, <laughs> yeah. like so many Jennifers, Something Jens else. and Jennies, and oh man, it was fun. Yeah. I've had a handful of friends throughout school that were Jennifers or Jennies. There you go. So uh, Jamie says, my name came directly from God. I changed my name about five years ago after he gave it to me. Well, that's oh, awesome. I, I love that, Jamie. And um, Rob says, I believe you told me that in the backyard in Texas. I remember that. I'll never forget that period of time. Um, I went with uh, Rob and his then wife, uh, met them at a bus station, and I rode with them to Texas. And we spent a couple of days there. We went there for a wedding of a mutual friend in San Antonio. And we were in Austin when the Oklahoma City bombings happened. Oh, my it gosh. Was, it was close to my birthday. So I, that's that's ingrained in my memory, that period of time. Wow. And uh, we hung out in the in the uh, backyard. It is uh, his ex-wife's friend's house. And um, they called me the hushmaker because they were feeling really loud and I kept telling them to be quiet because they're going to wake the neighbors. The hush maker. Call me the hush maker. <laughs> right. Oh, you were trying to be a good steward of the sound around you. That's really yeah, nice. I was. And that's <laughs> weird. Normally I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is good. All right. Yeah. You ready for another okay. one? Yeah. We're continuing on the early life cards because there's early, mid, and then later life and reflection right. um where were you born is that where you were raised oh um i was born in lansing michigan and we lived in mason 
there was no hospital in Mason. It was a smaller town, still is ah. fairly small considerably, but Lansing was the big town with nearest hospital. And um, I only actually lived in Mason for like a year, year and a half. And then we moved other places in Michigan. So no, I was not raised uh, in Lansing or around Lansing. Um, we lived in Gladwin. We lived in Holland. Uh, we lived in um, uh, uh, Perry, Michigan. So there were cities around there that we lived in uh, that I was raised. Uh, Mason. Mason, then you know about Hartwood School, or at least you should. Whatever they call the special ed school that's out near there where my aunt had a career out there oh. for many, many years. Wow. Um, yeah, I believe it's in Mason. Okay. Maybe well, you no, might I not have heard because it's been I such hadn't. a long time. But oh, if had. you had kept tabs on sure. that part of the world, you might have known. Yeah. I believe it's called Hartwood. Yep, special okay. needs school. Well, I'll have to look that up. Thank you, Marisa. Um, what about you, Marisa? I was born in Birch Run, Michigan. Two words, Birch like a birch tree, yep. run like a race. Mm -hmm. I was born at home, and it says that on my birth certificate. Now, I believe that's what Saginaw County, if I'm not mistaken. It is. So we, we did get to go to the hospital. I got there before the ambulance did, and thankfully, my mother was already a registered nurse. Oh. So... I was born in the bathroom. Okay. <laughs> at home. <laughs> oh my gosh. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> wow. That's so great. yeah. And so. yes, I lived there in Michigan for the first, I'd say, twenty five years of my life. Oh, okay. You were there quite a while then. Yeah. Yes, I was, yes indeed. I was only in Michigan for the first seven years of my life, and then I moved back there my senior year in high school. I've told that story before, but I was only there a little over a year. Um, but for the little time, I, and I lived in uh, Florida, I lived in Georgia for a brief time, um, lived in uh, with uh, Rob and his uh, ex-wife. I lived in Champaign-Urbana, Illinois, which I love. The grass is greener there. It really is. Um, I still love that place. It was just, uh, I don't know. It's probably changed since I've been there, but, uh, I really enjoyed that. And I lived for a brief time where, uh, John Robb lives out in Sonora, California. Um, I don't think he lives right there. Uh, he, he can say if he wants to, but that's where we, uh, lived. Uh, I was in California for six months and it didn't work out. There was one car and, uh, uh, couldn't, couldn't find a, a job and started to run out of money. So I uh, did what I always did back then, which is come back home and be near my family. <laughs> that's a whole nother story. Um, all right. That's me. All right. Me. I was born in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Mm. My mom is Cajun and my dad is a Yankee <laughs> from New Jersey. Yeah. Uh, lived there for about four years. And then we moved to New Jersey, Butler, New Jersey, for a little over a year. And then moved to Williamsburg, Virginia. Yeah. And now I'm here in South Carolina. So I definitely didn't stay uh, in the area that I was born in. Um, but I have some great memories. I, I have always loved thunderstorms. And Louisiana is so humid that we would get thunderstorms just about every afternoon around three. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So it was so nice. And uh, and it was just very lush down there. A lot of trees to climb. I, I love climbing trees. A lot of bugs. I'm fascinated by bugs, stick bugs yeah. and lizards and roly pulleys. And having all these brothers, uh, I, I definitely had the side of me that was girly and played dress up. And sure. my grandmother made dresses for me when I was little. She was a seamstress and um, but I, I would also get into the mud and the dirt with my brothers. You know, we used yeah. to dig out trenches in the yard and fill it with water and my parents would yell at us. <laughs> oh, sure. Sure they would. But yeah, parents. I loved, I loved Louisiana. Yeah. So Beautiful. you're born in Baton Rouge and, but where you live somewhere else though, right? What'd you say? Um, so we, I, Oh, so I was born in Baton Rouge. Yeah. Um, but we lived in, 
Oh my gosh, my mind oh, is a blank. Lop, yeah, no, no, I... no, no. We we did live in Baton Rouge. I was born there oh, and we okay. lived there. It was my grandparents that lived in Ville Platte, which was like a oh, an hour Ville. away. I had that off wrong. the bayou. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the majority of my childhood I lived in Williamsburg. That was like the biggest chunk out of my childhood up until sure. teen teendom. Um, and that was wonderful too, but I tell you, it was really strange for us to go from Louisiana where it's so hot year round to yeah. move to Butler, New Jersey, where we had our first snow. It was so magical because we had never, I mean, my dad grew up with snow, but my mom didn't yeah. and us kids, we, we hadn't so far. So going up there and like, you know, a feet of snow, multiple sure. feet of snow, and then having sure. to borrow a snow blower and wear yeah. earmuffs and stuff. It was great. I, I loved it. Yeah. And the house we had there, I just absolutely loved. It was like a craftsman house, sure. a little bungalow. It was pretty. Yeah, anyway. I love that I was able to experience snow in my early years living in Michigan. Yeah, it snows every such a year. magical time for kids. Do you remember going out into the woods after it snowed and it being so quiet? Oh, like yeah. Like a muffled sound. I didn't know that when yeah. I was little. I was like, gosh, this is just so magical. Yeah. <laughs> so quiet. Snow has a sound, in my opinion. I mean, even when you're not walking and crunching through it, there's it, it just, it's like it muffles the natural sounds of whatever mm -hmm. is in the area. It yeah. just sounds different to me, but I it it's does my imagination. We used um, to love to kick trees while somebody was standing underneath it. Oh, sure. <laughs> Look, it's snowing again. <laughs> we built forts and had snowball fights, all the things. Yeah, snow um, forts. Also, uh, we had, when I lived in Gladwin, we had a hill. It was about a half mile walk away. Uh, and, you know, we would get our sleds and, and spend all day sliding down the hill and come home and all wet and soggy and cold and my grandma would make uh, tomato soup and um and uh, hot cocoa and i just it's one of those memories that I, I just have an affinity for those things i don't really like tomato soup now but if i went sledding down a hill and uh got really cold uh, i would have tomato soup even to this day um it was <laughs> good i just uh, not a huge fan of it uh, okay, uh, Jamie says, I was born in Portland, Oregon, and raised in Salem and Albany, or Oregon. Uh, That's so John cool. Rob says, born and raised California boy. And Bubba New says, great to see you, Naz Lover. I used to live in Romulus, Michigan, by DTW Airport, back in the flight attendant days. Bay City, Saginaw. Saginaw. Cool area. Yeah, my, my Aunt Becky lives in Saginaw uh, right now. So that's pretty cool. Hey guys, hold nice on. Shut the front door. You've got an Aunt Becky. I do. Do you have uh, an Aunt Becky? Is she a good witch or bad witch? <laughs> is she a good aunt or a bad aunt? <laughs> is she an evil Aunt Becky? No, she wasn't. She wasn't evil. No. I have an evil Aunt Becky. Okay, I just uh -oh. Uh -oh. okay. Uh -oh. Anyway, <laughs> wow. And in that fact, so funny. in fact, when we were kids, she she spent a lot of time with us we would visit her she would take us bowling she took us fishing um she saved my life once of course you it could be said that she saved my life after not watching me and i uh, as a toddler <laughs> scurried down the side of a hill and into a river when it was oh cold. no yeah um, oh. but no she was she was a good aunt uh, we're not in touch uh as much as i'd like but uh there it is um anyway um, thank you guys for uh, answering these questions. It, it's a yeah. way for to like, like Jen said, I thought what she said was really good. Is you get, you get a chance to know you better as well. So thank you. Yeah. And All you right. guys are worth knowing just so you know. Yep. Absolutely. All right. Go ahead, Jen. Okay. This one might be a little deeper. What were your parents like? Do you want me to go first? Sure. <laughs> set the stage. Sure, set um, okay. So both of my parents worked. My mom uh, was a nurse. My dad was an architect. Um, my mom, when I was younger, she worked the emergency room like night shift. It was really, really rough on her. Um, and my parents, my dad was very angry. I've talked to him about this a couple of times. And um he grew up in a, a family where his mom was really sick and almost died and his dad was an accountant and they had, he had five kids and just, I think he dealt with anger and just didn't allow it. My grandfather didn't allow his children, my dad and the siblings 
to really be loud at all, whether it was anger or sadness, crying, or even happy and joyful. It was like they kind of had to keep a that middle of the road, no feelings kind of place. Sure. sure. My mom grew up in an alcoholic family that was very violent. Um, and both of her siblings really got into drinking and drugs. And she got lost in books. She was very academic, mm. ended up being valedictorian of her high school, even though it was a very tiny high school because she grew up in a small town called Ville Platte. Um, so my mom was more quiet and more of the the safety, safe person with us growing up, me and my brothers. Mm -hmm. And we were all really terrified of my dad. Um, they've sure. both mellowed out quite a bit in their older yeah. age. And um, and they did do better than their parents did. Um, there's still healing going on with me and my siblings in regard to our childhood. Yeah. Um, but both of my parents, uh, they actually, when my mom was pregnant with me in Louisiana, they, her and her whole family had an intervention for my grandfather, her dad, yeah. uh, which was incredibly stressful. And I think that's partly why I was premature. I was two months premature. Sure. Um, so I weighed like three or four pounds and a couple ounces. Um, so that was traumatic and stuff, but, but yeah, um, a mixed bag, you know, some, yeah. some, when you become an adult and you look back, you're like, what the heck <laughs> were my right. parents thinking? Sure. There were good times. There was really rough times, but my parents were very hard workers um, yeah. to provide for the family. And, uh, and we were latchkey kids, you know, yeah. we would come home from school and we had a key to the house and ran around the neighborhood and yeah. sometimes got our homework done. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> so it's a little, ah, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, so that's a little bit about my parents. All right. Thank All right. you, Jen. Yeah. Uh, Wait, was it where your, oh, what were your parents like? Gotcha. What are your parents like? Yeah. Marisa, what were your parents like? My mother was a registered nurse. My father met my mother when he was like an orderly working at the uh -huh. same hospital. He did not stay in this medical field. I believe he had interests in pursuing nursing for a good deal of his life, but it just never happened for him uh -huh. as far as I know. And uh, he was a considerably younger than my mother. Not like 20 years younger, but, you know, enough where it's a lady in her mid-20s that he was, you know, on the young side is all I'm saying. So Yeah. But, uh, but old enough to work and have a job. So, sure. but, um, so I didn't really get to know him very much, but my mother uh, had a beautiful soprano type singing voice. She was very much into natural and holistic medicine. She was a big proponent for uh, the use of medical cannabis. Oh. I, w I wish she would have lived to see the day where it became legal medically as well as across the board in Michigan as it is now. It would have helped her out a lot. She had a rough last, last 15 years of her life after having... Uh, a surgery for a back fusion. Oh, no. Oh, wow. So I would not suggest people, if at all possible, to get a back fusion. If you no. can avoid it, you know, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. I get it. But if you can not go there, I would suggest people don't. Sure. Because it's, you know, one, once it's fused, if you've got a nerve in there pinched, yeah, it's there. Yeah. And it's going to be chronic pain. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. And she, in her prime, she was a wonderful cook, a uh, world traveler, international woman of mystery. Uh, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful lady. And I miss her every single day. Oh, thank you, Marisa. Uh, wow. Okay. So, my dad was a. a work at a man. He was a very hard worker. He uh, worked uh, when he was younger, in his er uh, early, uh, late teens, early 20s, he worked for uh, GM in Michigan, um, you know, making cars and worked on the assembly line, things like that. And then he started doing like construction work and things like that. Most of his life, he was a trim carpenter, um, mainly on new home construction, did renovations, things like that. Um, so that... 
you know, what you do doesn't describe you, but he really loves working. So I didn't ever, I was never in want of clothes and food and shelter. And I'm grateful for, for that. Um, yeah. Uh, he did teach me lots of things, you know, clean my fingernails and how to use a knife and um, lots of construction things, how to use a hammer and, uh, you know, mostly that sort of stuff. Uh, but he had his moments. He he was um, overall a good father, and uh, we we still talk, and uh, I love him. Um, but uh, he, I would consider him emotionally unavailable. Uh, you know, I I would try to talk to him sometimes about stuff, and he would listen. But it just it just was was more difficult. Um, he was gone a lot uh, because he was working, missed a lot of stuff. Um, so that, uh, when he would show up for something, I was very excited that he was there. Um, my mom was the opposite. She was involved in every aspect of my life, um, by her choice. Um, I have said before that she was a helicopter parent before the term existed. Um, always in my business about, <laughs> about everything. Um, but the good side, the thing I liked about her, is she was not emotionally unavailable. Uh, she wrote little notes and put in my lunchbox frequently. If I was, uh, going on a trip, uh, or going to visit my grandparents or something like that, she would always put notes, um, you know, long notes for me to read on the bus or however I got there, uh, which I always appreciated. And she helped me appreciate mental health, um, and, uh, yeah. to, to be someone who loves women. Uh, who appreciates uh, the fair sex. Uh, and I appreciate that as well. She was a talker. So um, I'm also a talker. <laughs> I love that. And so we would have conversations. Uh, later in life, uh, she and I went to counseling uh, together to work on a relationship. And the therapist says, you guys just need to do something fun together. That's my homework for you. <laughs> Because you talk everything out. And that is, that was true. She she nailed it. Um, so sometimes, I mean, I think talking with each other is a good thing. But sometimes you can overlook, in my opinion, uh, just doing something fun and, and not talking it to death. And we did that. We played tennis together before she died. And she took me for my birthday to go see Screw Tape Letters, a uh, 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 Broadway traveling uh, version of it that came to the area. Um, and it was wonderful. I'm glad that we had uh, started counseling together a couple of years before she passed. Of course, I didn't know she was going to gonna die. So it was, um, I all, I'll always have that, that uh, uh, at the end of her life, we were a lot closer than uh, before. So I appreciate that. Um, she did make up, she had various jobs. I, I wouldn't really define her by the job. She was mainly a, a stay at home mom. But when, when we got in financial trouble, she was, uh, right out there getting a job. She was a waitress a lot, a few times that she had to work. And my parents were in Amway. I've mentioned that and she would get the products ready and, you know, you get the orders out and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, she was, she was a wonderful, uh, hardworking person. Also, she was an athlete. So we played, she played uh, softball when she was younger. And so she wasn't, um, she wasn't just a girly girl. She, she had no problem getting dirty. She loved work. Oh, this is the thing. She loved working in the yard everywhere. We went, yes. we had a garden, we Gardening. had flowers and, and just all kinds of stuff. She really enjoyed doing that. And when I got old enough to do that sort of thing, um, I'd worked on a golf course for two years in Florida and got to learn a lot about planting things and trimming and, and cutting and stuff like that. So, um, I would help uh, mom in the yard. I was in charge of mowing and trimming and uh, would help her with certain things. And so it was another way for us to spend time together. I'll always have that. Cool. Okay. Uh, it's a, de uh, definitely delayed saying hello to, uh, Giorgio Scanu. I hope I didn't mispronounce your last name, Giorgio. And also our friend, uh, Face to Ace. Uh, he says that his parents were rich. They've passed away, both of them. And let me see who else answered. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, uh, 
uh, Ace says, my uh, parents have business in Florida and Puerto Rico. Uh, then they passed away. Me and my brother took their business now also. I'm a YouTuber. Excellent. Yeah, um, Ace, I, I haven't visited your channel, but I'm going to make it a point to do that. Uh, I don't know what kind of content you have, but if you feel like uh, letting people know or putting your link in the chat, uh, uh, please feel free to do so. Or um, if you... I think uh, Nez might have put it in the chat. Okay, okay. Yeah, I see it. Thank you, Nez. All right, there we go. Uh, next question? Next, yes. Um, this one might be interesting. How did your parents meet? I'll go first. Mm -hmm. Or or is this probably something that our chat people, they probably don't want to hear about our parents per se, maybe more about us? Yeah, For me, well, it's the redundancy so. because I already said they met at the hospital. So yeah, I really okay. don't have any more to add. So let's okay. see. But, but I want to hear what your stories. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so my parents actually met on a blind date, which is really interesting to me. Um, that's about all I know, though. <laughs> oh. Jason? How did your parents meet? My parents met at Spring Arbor College, uh, close to Lansing. It's just south in, in a, a city called Jackson, Michigan. Uh, they both went there when they were 18. And uh, my dad has always been in uh, gospel music groups, and he even did it back then. And that's where he met his longtime friend, Phil. He still does it with him. Uh, they're in a group now called the Envoys, but they were in various groups over the years, King's Quartet, Envoys, uh, for a short time in a group called the Sunshine Boys, uh, all Christian, Christian-based quartet kind of style. Uh, and my mom, the way she tells it, uh, they, uh, him and Phil and a couple other folks were singing at some kind of uh, uh, concert at the college, and my mom was in the audience, and she saw my dad and up there singing for the Lord. And she was mesmerized, and the rest is history. They they met and dated for a while, got married, and then a year later had me. So uh, yeah, and then three years later had had uh, my sister. So uh, my sister and I are pretty close, but uh, yeah. So they both met in Jackson, Michigan. Uh, my mom had lived in Holt, Michigan, uh, for the first. Uh, part of her life before she went to college and my dad lived in Gladwin with uh, his parents until he cool. uh, moved away to go to college. So there's All that. Right. All right. Let's see. Um, how did your family spend time together when you were young? Um, I'll go first unless one of you guys wants to go first. No, ask the question again. I, I j oh. just before you go, uh, Bubba News said he found the Envoy's website. So I was ah, reading that when you read the question. Cool. I, yeah, they have oh, a website, gotcha. the Envoy's, if anyone wants to see what my dad looks like, see if you can guess which one he is. They might It might yeah. say on there who he is. But, oh, that's uh, true. I'd love to see what their guess is. <laughs> yeah, and um, they're really good. Uh, yeah, for, they for are really talented guys. They're, they're really good. I, I When they're in the area, and they do a concert, I try to go see them and, and be supportive that way. But anyway, I'm sorry, Jen, go ahead. No, that's okay. So this question, how did your family spend time together when you were young? Um, for me, we would watch movies. A lot of times they were Bond, James Bond. <laughs> <'Cause you're bad. laughs> um, yeah. And then MASH on TV when we ate dinner, that or Law and Order. Um we would go on road trips sometimes to see family. Like I'd mentioned that my grandparents lived in Ville Platte and that was like an hour away from Baton Rouge. And um, so we, and all, a lot of cousins and other family members all lived in this small town. So we would take road trips. So I have a lot of fond memories of road trips with my family when we were younger. Um, and then going to the beach on the, the Gulf coast um, from where we were in Louisiana as well. And the sand is so white there. It's so pretty. But another thing that we would do together is go on Amway trips, yep. convention trips. And Ooh, that was, it, we kind it. of, we kind of built our trips into these Amway convention trips, yep. which uh, there was a couple of summers in the nineties that we went to Hilton head yep. and they would have an Amway convention at the golf and tennis resort. Was that what it was? Golf yeah. and tennis. And Jason uh, and I, tennis, when we were tennis and tennis and not that matters. Yeah. Yeah. So when Jason and I were just friends and we were doing TSL years ago, 
um, we were just talking about stuff and I had mentioned Hilton Head or, or Amway, one of the two. And we realized that we had actually been at this resort at the same time, <laughs> maybe more than once. It was maybe crazy. More. We were both like, wait, what? So what? we were talking about the boardwalk and the pool and the game room yep. and the houses and stuff or not the houses, but the rooms. Yep. Um, so that was pretty cool. So yeah, those are some of my, uh, some of my memories of spending time with family together. Yeah, and we both played tennis too, right? For, mm-hmm. yep. Your family, yeah, your family played tennis. Um, yeah, my grandparents had a tennis court on their property down in Ville Platt. They had this like mm-hmm. little tiny, you know, uh, one story house, but a lot of land because my grandfather was a rice farmer. Um, and but they they were my grandparents were really into tennis, and so they actually built a tennis court. And I think it had two separate courts because they used to have like people in town. They had like a tennis club and they would come and actually play games, you know, like uh, actual competing games on these courts on their property. Oh, it was wow. really cool. Wow. Okay. Great. Um, I'll go next uh, before I start. So this ties into how we spent time together because uh, Bubba News uh, posted something from the Envoy site. For many decades, the envoys have sung in churches of all denominations, camp meetings, television shows, rest homes, and schools. And then he says, that's awesome, Crips. So one of the ways I spent time with my family, we would, my dad, uh, their group, my dad always buys a bus. They still have one to this day. They've had many buses over the years because they break down and it's they're expensive to fix. So just buy a new bus. And he also, every time he gets a bus, he... Um, uh, puts his uh, carpentry skills to good use, and he he builds bedrooms for the for the group uh, with bunk beds. So I would one of the ways I would spend time with my dad is I would ride with them all up and down the East Coast and go on envoy. I called them envoy trips, and I did that from when I was a little boy all the way up to an adult. Uh, because you know, it was a free trip to Michigan. A lot of times I would go as an adult when they would go to Michigan. So usually it was a chance to, uh, see my grandparents, which I always wanted to do. But as a result of that, I, I have seen just about every denomination of church and been in it, um, that you can imagine seen some crazy stuff and seen some really wonderful stuff too. So that was one way, but also like Jen, we watch movies as a family, movies and TV shows. We started a tradition when I was 12 that we would go every Christmas and see a movie together as a family. And I love that. And when we'd watch movies at home, my mom would make uh, air pop popcorn with real melted butter. Mm. And I just, that's my favorite, you know, real melted butter. (laughs) Not the not butter, the fake kind. Not the butter sauce that you get in a movie theater. Not the butter powder. Butter powder, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I like the butter, butter sauce. <laughs> <laughs> to each his own. <laughs> I just mean it's to me. It's it, the real butter's better. That's all. That's all I'm saying. I don't get me wrong. When I go to movies, no hate on we, the butter sauce. We get popcorn. We get popcorn <laughs> with whatever butter they put on it. Yeah. Um, I just prefer that. Mm, Uh, We also took trips. You know, Jen mentioned uh, Amway. Um, They did those all over the place. So I was in uh, Tantara um, uh, in the uh, in the mountains, uh, the uh, uh, Missouri. I I couldn't remember where it was Uh, in the mountains, the resorts. We went up to Pennsylvania, a place called Seven Springs. They had an indoor ice skating rink and a huge game room. That's nice. how I remember things based on what if they. Yeah, it, right. The fun stuff. <laughs> um, and also, as Jen mentioned, Hilton Head all over the place. Uh, so Amway was a means of travel for me and for my sister when we were kids. And we would usually drive. So, you know, it's time in the car together. Um, also, both Shannon and I played sports. And so. When I played a sport my dad liked, like baseball, he would teach me how to pitch and uh, hit. He did spend time with me like that. A um, little bit basketball, but not as much. Uh, so, yeah, trips, uh, movies. Um, we had picnics a lot, which I, I am grateful for. You know, we'd go to the park and um, and uh, put out a blanket. My mom would make a uh, take a picnic basket and stuff and we'd eat. Also, my parents were, uh, campers. We had a huge tent and we would go camping sometimes, which I, I also appreciate. 
uh, and tennis is the last thing I'll mention is my mom and dad played tennis all the time. And also, um, I mentioned Phil, who's in the Envoys, one of my dad's oldest friends. Uh, him and his wife, Marilyn, they played tennis too. So they would play doubles. And then I learned how to play tennis at a pretty early age. Um, I never competed or anything like that, but Shannon did. When she was in high school, she actually played competitive tennis. Um, you know, got a real trainer and stuff. She's she's very good. She has a really good forehand. But anyway, that's that's me. All right, Niz, you're up. How did your family spend time together when you were when you were young? They did a lot of family dinners and barbecues and things like that. They enjoyed taking family road trips and going up north and going to getting finding deals for you know places to stay and Petoskey it was the Pinestead Reef yes. that had a Ooh. had a, a deal every summer or fall or some crazy thing and that everybody pile into some vehicles and go there um they enjoyed uh, going out to eat together they enjoyed uh playing cards sometimes they like to play euchre i was never one to play euchre i didn't care for it um Things like that. That's pretty much. I can't really think of yeah. much else. Eating, talking, playing cards, traveling, sure, and food. Breeze, so. I like euchre, by the way. <laughs> um, thank you, Marisa. Okay. Um, from the chat, uh, Annette says we played a lot of games and went on some good vacations, so that's good. And then John Rob says we were an Amway family. So you guys get an indication from what I said about what that uh, can mean. Uh, Jamie Grace says we watched TV slash movies and played cards, cards, dominoes, board games. I grew up in a cult, so we went to the Feast of Tabernacles every year up to age 12. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Da, da, da. Looks like that's it. Thank you again, guys, for uh, joining in. Appreciate that so much. Okay. So cool. What's up next? Um, let's see. Did your family have any holiday traditions? Ooh, I'll go. Okay, go. <laughs> <laughs> so my dad, when we were really little, he used to put the train tracks around the bottom of the Christmas tree. Oh. Um, that was pretty fun. Uh, yeah. Putting together the tracks and watching it That's go. Cool. Um, there was something else that we did that I was going to say, and I think it flew out of my brain. Um, we dev oh, you know, when we were little and my, this drove my mom crazy, my dad would have us get the tree on Christmas Eve and, and we would decorate it on Christmas Eve. Oh, <laughs> it, it was so strange. Cause now our family, as we've all gotten older, we put the tree up around Thanksgiving, you know, yeah, um, that makes sense. so it's quite, quite a, quite a difference. And, uh, and we used to string popcorn for the tree, which I, I really liked doing. Yeah. I've always liked sewing, but that was fun. A little bit of a waste. You're like, mm, I want to eat the popcorn, but we'd always yeah. pop a few in our mouth as we're, sure you, you know, would. string it up, string it along. Who wouldn't, who and wouldn't do that? We've always had the uh, opening one gift on Christmas Eve um, oh. after going to the candlelight service at church, which I always really loved as well. It was just so pretty to see a sea of people with their candles and singing Christmas hymns and the organ, and it just was lovely. I yeah. loved it. Okay, good. I'll go last on this one. Marisa, what do you say? What's the question now? Oh, uh, it is, did your family have any holiday traditions? Uh, eating and fighting. and <laughs> oh, no. Fighting, eating and fighting. Eating, fighting, and you know, if it called for presents, I guess they do that. So that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, cool. Uh, yeah. So uh, Christmas, what I, I mentioned we would go see a movie around Christmas. wasn't always on Christmas, but sometimes it was. So I enjoyed that. Uh, we would also open one present on Christmas Eve, which I enjoyed. Um, 
uh, when I was younger, we did Halloween, but then my parents went to a church that Halloween was evil. So uh, my dad said no more Halloween. So I was pretty upset about that, but that's another story. Uh, and one, one time, so what my dad said was, okay, now since we're not doing Halloween, we'll do something fun on Halloween. And the first time that we did that, we went ice skating. So I thought, oh, this is pretty cool. If we're not allowed to trick or treat, at least we're going to do something fun every Halloween. That was the only time that we did it. <laughs> Just that once. <laughs> After that, it was not uh, not a special uh, time at all. Now, of course, as an adult, I understand. I, I see why they decided to do that. I get it. But uh, being a kid, you don't really understand those things in the way that you do when you're an adult. It just seemed like they were taking another thing away from me. Um, so, uh, Easter, my mom would, uh, hide eggs, uh, and, uh, some of them were plastic and full of candy that those are the ones you want to find. So we would decorate eggs together as a family. Well, not my dad, but, uh, my mom, sister and I, um, let's see. Oh, Thanksgiving. So Thanksgiving, um, I don't know if it's as much tradition as, as this is just what we would do. But, um, and uh, both families enjoyed, uh, having the football game on in the background, you know, cause the Detroit Lions, especially the ones from Michigan, Detroit Lions were on, uh, every Thanksgiving, that was a tradition that had nothing to do with us specifically, but for some reason, that's just always the way it is. And, uh, we enjoyed that. And then we would, uh, have uh, Thanksgiving dinner about two o'clock. Usually, I mean, it wasn't stringent, but usually in the early afternoon. And then uh, we would take a nap. Most of us would take a trip tan, a trip to fan <laughs> and a nap. And then we would get up and we would play games. Uh, and I loved that. We would play Monopoly and Life and some, some card games and sometimes do card game tournaments like Euchre tournaments and stuff like that. And then uh, later in life, uh, 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 this was when with my extended family in Michigan because there was lots of people. I have uh, my dad has uh, two brothers and a sister, so sometimes they would be there with their family. So it was a big deal. Lots yeah. and lots of people with kids and all of that. So it was a really fun time. And then later in life, my dad bought a uh, ping pong table. Uh, when I was uh, nice. 12. So we would, uh, after all that, we would go and play ping pong. And uh, my dad is really good. I got really good too, but my dad usually beat me until I got older and then I would beat him sometimes, but he usually won. He's really, really <laughs> uh, talented ping pong player. And nice. my grandparents had a pool table. So when we were there, we would play pool too. Anyway. All right. Thanks all right. for sharing. Crips. Okay, this next question, this is from the midlife section of the cards. Now, this one won't apply to me or Jason, but I would love to hear Marisa's um, answers, and she'll, she'll get it once I read it. Okay. Um, tell us one of your proudest moments for each of your children. That's a good question. That's a really good question. Uh, them being who they are today. I'm proud of them every day. I don't oh, have I a single that. moment or thing they've done in particular. Just them yeah. being them. You're mm. a good mom, Nez. Yeah. You don't pick mom. out just one or two. It's every day. It's every day. Every day they every get up day. and they're alive and breathing. I'm thankful. Yeah. Awesome. And I can't be any more proud of them or love them more than I do right this minute. Yeah. Can I adopt you as my mom? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a snow lady. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I'm good with the two. <laughs> yeah. she, she um, pull up. Uh, before we continue, let me read the couple answers from the last yeah. question. So Baba New says road trips as a teenager, young adult were more enjoyable than it was with family as a kid. Are we there yet? LOL. Every time. <laughs> and then, oh. um, uh, and that said, we always had a ping pong table. Let me make sure I didn't miss anyone. Uh, nope, that's it. Um, and that says, I'm glad my parents allowed us to trick or treat until we got too old. And then Jamie says, uh, we would get together with extended family for Thanksgiving and 4th of July and all, uh, all other holidays were pagan. Yeah, I get that. 
We weren't, I mean, we did the fireworks on 4th of July sometimes, but it wasn't really that big a deal in our family. Sometimes we'd get sparklers and stuff and usually have some yeah. kind of food. We would have a lot of food at certain holidays, but it wasn't necessarily a tradition except for uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving. Those were pretty big deals. Okay. okay. I'm going to do something a little off the wall because people are talking about road trips. Okay. Okay. Uh, one, put the number one in the chat. <laughs> if your parents ever yelled at you in the back seat saying, don't make me pull this car over <laughs> or two in the chat. If your parents never said that to you, <laughs> I'm putting a one. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was like the terror. No, no, no. We'll be good. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Oh man. Okay. Next question. Did you attend any school or training after high school? Uh, yeah, I went to college. It was uh, it was a couple decades after I graduated, but yeah, I, I finished uh, college. I have a degree on my wall that's uh, not worth the money I paid for it, for sure. <laughs> I went to community college, did not finish. I, I dropped out due to some serious anxiety from some stuff I was dealing with, but well, sure. um, my, I started off with a degree for uh, liberal arts, but then changed it to a photography degree, oh. but did not finish. Okay. What about you, Nez? What? Do I'm going to stop the car? Oh, uh, did did you attend any school or training after high school? Oh, oh, I was, I'm a question behind. Uh, that's all right. like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure She's in the chat. I was in the chat. Um, I went to... Michigan State University right out of yeah. high school yeah. and spent there a couple of years. That was not my cup of tea. I and know, at the I time know. I didn't um I didn't realize that I had freedom and choices and was still busy trying to do what I thought was expected right. and not who I was and supposed to be, you know. Yeah. Um yeah. And then uh, I went to work for a while, and then I went back to school, and I went to Delta College and Ooh. got my associate's Delta. honors yeah. at Delta College in yeah. art. And then, so I do have a college degree um, okay. in art, but um, I never got to finish the bachelor. Um, I've gone back to school. I've taken classes at Columbus College of Art and Design. Sure. And yeah. I've taken classes at Ohio State University. Mm -hmm. But right. every time I have tried to go that way, something happens. Be it uh, a major life event, um, you know, birth, death, divorce. You name the thing. And yeah. uh, and so I've kind of gotten the hint by now that maybe that's not where I need to be right okay. now. Sure. So, I mean, I still have the desire always to pursue my education further. But where God's brought me right now, I don't need a piece of paper to be an artist. Mm -hmm. I'm already selling yeah. my artwork by commission. Mm -hmm. I love yes. doing what I do on YouTube. Um, and I love doing what I'm doing right here with you. Yeah. So do I need any more validation from the world at large to be considered a air quotes professional? I'm going to have to say for what I'm doing. No, no, no I don't No. I'm already there and awesome. I'm, I'm glad to be here. So if God makes a way for it to happen, great. If not, I'm not going to lay awake nights worrying about it. So. Oh, good. I like that. I'm, I'm happy right where I'm at right now. So. Excellent. Um, awesome. Before we move on, uh, so the Aunt Becky that I mentioned, she went to Delta College. So, I, uh, yeah, we were traveling around the same oh, place. Oh, okay. Uh, That's cool. She, she, she uh, became a physical therapist, and she did that for 30 years, I think. Um, she was really good at it, from what I understand. Really enjoyed helping people, and um, she worked a lot. Uh, but, uh, yeah, anyway. Um, before we continue, Jamie says, went to college. 
uh, BS in microbiology and MS in plant molecular biology. Definitely not worth the paper they're written on. That's true, but I had no idea that you uh, were that. I mean, I know you're a smart person. I definitely pick up on that, but of uh, uh, microbiology and plant I think that's awesome. biology. Wow. That's, uh, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I don't regret, I don't know about you, Jamie. I don't regret going to college cause I made a lot of friends and I did a lot of plays and, um, met people through that. And then for a decade after, because of the people I met, I enjoyed uh, writing plays and directing. And so something did come out of it but I just have never gotten a job based on my degree when I was told that uh, I would uh, have access to better jobs if I went to college. Instead, I still have debt that I'll never be able to pay off without some kind of uh, um, intervention. Miraculous intervention. Miraculous yeah. intervention, yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, go ahead, Jen. Mm, this one could be fun. <laughs> what are some of the most your most vivid memories with your friends in your 20s? Oh, wow. First, <laughs> oh, go ahead, Jen, if you want to go. Oh, no, no, you can go first. One of the, uh, we did trips a lot, uh, my friends and myself. Uh, we went to Myrtle Beach, uh, a few of us. Uh, we also went to Hilton Head. Um, so as Jen mentioned, it was more than just Amway. That was our vacation spot. It started because of Amway and my parents liked the same place. In fact, you've heard me say uh, that was the place that we were at when my parents sat me down when I was 14. Um, Shannon was there too. She was quite a bit younger, but they told us that they thought we should start praying for our future spouse. And whatever my parents' flaws, whatever things I, you guys have heard me talk about that I didn't like about the way I was raised, that is something that I appreciated back then and I appreciate it today. Um, you know, it took me a long time to find whom I feel was God's uh, woman for me. Um, but I uh, prayed uh, pretty consistently. And when I went back to Hilton Head, I had a, not a ritual, I guess, but I would go out on the beach at night and j listen to the waves and just pray for my future wife. I had a, a diary that I wrote for her you know, just telling her, oh, where are you? And I, I mean, it's so lamenting, melodramatic. <laughs> um, but it, it really, um, I feel like it was a beneficial thing for me to pray. I think people should do that. Pray about if you're not married, if you want to be married, let me add that. Um, yeah. Pray about your future spouse and, and start young. Um, I believe in that. Uh, took me 34 years from the time that I first prayed to the time it actually happened. And uh, also took a marriage that I didn't wait for God and felt like I would just uh, handle on my own. And as you guys know, that didn't work out too well. Um, but uh, God does uh, restore the time. He, uh, he restores the land to his children, I believe. And he certainly The land the me. locusts have eaten. That's right. One of my favorite verses. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's me. What was the question? Uh, what are some of your most vivid memories with your friends oh, yeah, in your that's, 20s? That's, that's what started it. So, <laughs> uh, my most vivid memories are several times uh, going to Hilton Head because my parents would go there. And so I'd say, hey, can Mark, the, the Mark I was talking about earlier that I uh, grew up with, uh, he came with us once. Um, uh, Cheryl McKay, who is a yeah. Hollywood writer, she and uh, Lisa Felton, Phil's daughter, uh, they rode with me once uh, to go up there and be there around my family. Shannon brought people there, uh, her friends. Um, my parents were really, um, they really allowed people to hang out with us, which I also appreciate. And then um, they also would come to us to visit my grandparents in Florida and my grandparents in Michigan. I brought friends there. Sometimes they ended up meeting a lot of my friends. So, uh, most vivid memory for me is trips, uh, going someplace uh, with them. And I'm uh, really grateful for that. All right. Cool. cool. Nez, you want to go or you want me to go first? Um, my memorable moments with friends in my 20s. Um, yes. 
I'd say the trips to Chicago. I um, had a friend I met in Michigan State. And one of the times, uh, a couple of us went, but usually it was where we went for spring break. Other people went to where it was warm. Uh, my friend had family in Chicago. So we'd go in the off season there in spring break and uh, I'd go to m museums. I mean, what else is there for me to do that I would love more than to just go to museums? And it was wonderful. Aww. So I got to see uh, uh, Monet water lilies, which I didn't realize <sighs> was the entire room, a oh whole goodness. installment. Oh, I'm it's so not jealous. just a picture in a frame, it's a an experience and I got to see the Warhol works for the first time I saw them later in life as well and then I got to see you know so many beautiful masterpieces and I got to go to the Field Museum of uh, Natural History where they have the lions from Sablo from uh, that movie uh, was it Ghost in the Darkness or I don't know but yeah oh yeah those stuffed lions are there. Creepy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I loved it. I loved being being there in Chicago. It was a lot, a lot of fun. Excellent. Very cool. All right. Um, oh, I'll go. You? Okay, go ahead. Um, so I put in the chat just so I didn't forget because I'm old. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so um, I went to a lot of concerts in my 20s. Um, saw a lot of Dave Matthews and a lot of James Taylor. Um, loved both of those bands slash singer songwriters. So a lot of road trips with friends. Um, I worked at Outback Steakhouse for a few years after high school and met a lot of really amazing people. And a lot of musicians. We did a lot of hanging out and singing and that was always fun. We were doing some other stuff, but we won't go into that. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, and growing up in, in Williamsburg, where Colonial Williamsburg is at, we did a lot of walking around CW um, and then sandwiches from the cheese shop there on Duke of Gloucester Street, which is their sandwiches. are. I love them. Um, even there was one time when I because I was in community college for photography. And I remember my friend Margo from high school, uh, mm -hmm. I had three friends, Margo, Kathleen, and Whitney, and the four of us hung out all the time. And Margo was very much into acting and singing, and she had gotten some costumes from an aunt of hers. Uh, there was like this eyelet lace Juliet dress, and there was like a Grecian dress, and in, like a, an early, maybe like early 1900s English dress with the high neck and the buttons. And I remember I dressed, I dressed these friends up and we went and did like photo shoots at night in Colonial Williamsburg, which is really fun because they have yeah. a lot of spotlights in the trees up and down the street. And um, gosh, I had so much fun doing photography at, at uh, college because we did studio lighting and darkroom work, which I love darkroom work, working with film. This is right before digital really came on the scene. Sure. Like after I left, they started renting out uh, digital cameras. But but that was fun doing like impromptu photo shoots. That was one of my favorite things. Dressing yeah. up, uh, so much fun. So oh. it was it was a lot of fun. Met a lot of people. Um, it's interesting, Williamsburg. Um, you get a lot of people from all over the world. Yeah. You know, going to William and Mary, which is the college there, and um, a lot of tourists, obviously, because people are traveling to visit Colonial Williamsburg. Sure. So we got to meet a lot of different kinds of people, which was really, really fun. Yeah. Um, so that was, that was my early twenties. Oh, great. That was a good Loved question. It. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Check on the chat. Uh, Jamie Grace says, loved having friends hang out at our house, married at 19 and talk, eat and bake monster cookies. Uh, John yes. Rob says, driving over the Sierra mountains with Jason. Oh, Aww. yeah. I've talked oh, about that. that. Fun. I think you were here that night. I was talking about when we um, crossed the state line into California and it was at night and rolled the window down and the air in that area was just so cool and fresh and clean. I, I'll never forget that. Uh, also, Rob, you'll have to remind me. I don't think it was, I think it was Reno that we stopped in, but when we were traveling uh, and you could see the lights of the of the city, like in the valley, if I remember. 
Uh, and that was something that was a, a sight to behold. Um, and then also when we went to Texas and then we were coming, uh, I was coming to Champaign Urbana for the first time and it was late at night and there's a street there that has a really nice, uh, antique lights on both sides of the road. It's like one of the main thoroughfares. And I thought it was, uh, wonderful. Uh, Rob made it a point to come in <laughs> that way so I could see it. Uh, at night, and it was great. I really liked that area. Sounds right. beautiful. Yeah. Well, I'm glad All Rob right. remembers that. I bet you yeah. also remember, just real quick, I bet you also remember, Rob, when uh, the uh, U-Haul, was it was the U-Haul or the car, one of them broke down uh, in the desert, and uh, there was only one place nearby, so we left it on the side of the road, and we had to get a part for it. I think it was a... Um, radiator pipe uh i think that's what it was if i remember correctly and we stayed in a hotel and it was a uh it was a resort town for a casino big casino uh -oh. and uh rob and i went and spent some time uh to the uh consternation of his uh ex-wife didn't think it was a good idea for us to do that but we were both very conservative didn't didn't blow a bunch of money but had fun um uh playing games in the casino for a while that day. So that was a good memory. I have a lot of memories with Rob, actually. How, wait, I have a question. How did Rob find you here on, on T TSL? Uh, we've stayed in touch. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't sure it. if it was like a random no. thing. And I, I thought, wow, out of all the YouTube channels, I'm surprised he found you. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that would have been something. No, we, I mean, we don't talk every day, but we, we've stayed in touch over the years. I would, I would say like oh, he, cool. when he was going up to visit his family, I think I mentioned this. Um, I think they lived in Indiana. Uh, he was at the Charlotte airport and I went and met him and took him to Bojangles and we sat and talked for a while. He thought he'd had more time, but uh, it wasn't very long, but yeah. Cool, well, Rob cool. is also a fantastic pool player. Um, I am too. But I bet if you ask Rob, he would say he's better than me. But uh, <laughs> of course, sometimes I would win. And that was, we uh, still have yet to find we, out if I'm better than you. Yeah, we'll we, see. yeah, we need to find out. <laughs> I'm not super competitive. I, I never really have been that competitive. But Rob and I were competitive. Um, yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. Next question: What have you changed your mind about over the years? Oh, that's a good question. You want to go first? Yeah. Or does Nez want to go first? Nez hasn't gone first in a while. Oh, go ahead. I'm eating a crunchy snack. Oh, okay, I'll go first. <laughs> <laughs> you can go after me. I would say patriarchy. That's something that's on my mind because I'm doing a write up for it next week. Oh, yeah. Um, I just, uh, my mind has definitely changed regarding that. I think. I think a marriage works a lot better when both people are equals. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll go more into that next week. Okay. To the wise, but yeah. All That's right. That's my answer, I'll, my short I'll answer. Go next to, <laughs> oh, thank you, Jen. I'll go next to give uh, Marisa a minute uh, to finish her snack. But um, the biggest thing that popped in my head, well, there are two things. One is the shape of the earth. I'm not going to go into that. Okay. But uh, that was something I definitely changed my mind or was uh, woken up to. Uh, but the other thing is, now, not the whole of Christianity, but a lot of things within Christianity that uh, over time I have changed my mind about uh, and feeling like um, uh, we should be following uh, the words of Jesus more than just calling yourself a Christian and treating people poorly. Um, I don't really think that I uh, treated people that poorly, but I definitely was influenced by um, being brought up in uh, churches and going to private Christian school and stuff like that in uh, many good ways. So let me make sure and say that uh, more good ways probably than bad ways, uh, but uh, picked up some bad habits and bad theology that I changed uh, my mind about, uh, which I'm pretty grateful for now because I've never felt 
uh, so much peace. And what it also did, it changed my mind about how I viewed God personally. And people could say, oh, you're just making God into who you wanted to be. And that's fine. I'm, I, everyone's entitled to their opinion. And I'm not going to try to tell you who God is to you. Uh, but yeah, changed my mind about, I used to believe he uh, played cosmic whack-a-mole with people. You know, as long as you were obedient, then um, he treated you kindly and with love. And when you're disobedient, he would whack you on the head. And uh, a lot of people think that. And I feel like he's uh, always loving. Doesn't mean we don't go through hard times when we're disobedient. It's just a, a, a rule of nature, I believe. Uh, but he, uh, in my experience, uh, if he has to uh, uh, discipline you, it's, uh, it's, it's loving. You know, that's just my opinion, uh, not to get into a big theological discussion, but that's, those are the couple things I've changed my mind about. Cool. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, you're still eating your crunchies. <laughs> Crunchy snacks. What have I changed my mind about? Cigarettes. I don't want to smoke them anymore. Oh, that's a good mind changing yeah. experience. Fantastic. Yeah. Jason, and I understand that. We've both had our, our times. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I, I smoked from age 17, not a pack a day back then or anything like that, but I sm smoked for a long time. And, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I still, every once in a while, I still like the way a fresh cigarette tastes, especially when you're not smoking them every day. Um, but I'm glad I don't do that anymore. It's smelling I agree smell. there. I yeah. think in moderation. I mean, God made the tobacco plant that serves some kind of purpose. Um, but, you know, what we get in the store are so many chemicals and terrible things that do even more damage to your body than just an occasional smoke of the straight tobacco. Um, so I don't mind having a cigarette every once in a while, but I yeah. do not have a pack in my house or my purse. Um, oh. I, it's been over a month since I, you know, had to pack with me every day and, you know, all of that nonsense. Wonderful. So praise God. And that is from getting set free from that bondage after going to a prayer meeting at... Um, with FOJC, uh, uh, Underground Church Channel. Oh. That one I told you with uh, David and Donna Carrico yeah. that ministered to people that have been through satanic ritual abuse. Oh, Those people, yeah. their prayer a thon every month has been fantastic. Anybody looking for that uh, oh. really anointed, uh, powerful prayer meeting, uh, I share that out whenever they do it. This month, it's the 25th. So, I will be there, God willing. It's going to be All fun. Right. I love it. All right. All right. Next, what is a dream you've let go of? I'll go first. Okay. Go ahead. Being being perfect. <laughs> <laughs> right. Who can relate? I. Oh my gosh. I think when I was little, I got this idea in my head that. I needed to somehow be perfect in order to be loved. And yeah. it's taken a while for me to get to a point where I'm like, that is just absolutely ridiculous. Boo hockey. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And that within our imperfections, our personality and humanness and yeah. beautiful things, you know, beautiful absolutely. things. That's my short answer. I love it. I love it. But um, you guys, what is a dream you've let go of? I, I started acting in second grade. I was in church plays, and then I was in school plays, and then I was in college plays. But when I was young and for a long time, even in my 20s, I really seriously considered moving to L.A. and trying my hand at being a Hollywood actor. Um, I have uh, let that go. I was an extra in Talladega Nights, and that's enough for me. I, I mean, I if if um, if they were doing a movie around here and they were looking for actors, you know, for fun, I might audition and see if I made it. But uh, I've let go of that dream. 
Uh, some of it is that it's very difficult to do and I don't have the money to, to move to California and at, especially at my age now and try my hand at that. Uh, but a lot of things I have heard about the movie business that I want no part of. So that is predominantly the main reason, but there's a couple of reasons. Um, I'm grateful that I've done a lot of plays. I've done more plays and been involved with more productions. I, I could not do another one again, and I would uh, be content that I've, uh, I've done it and I've been successful at it. Um, but uh, yeah, being a Hollywood actor was my dream that I let go of. Yeah. What about you, Nez? Being a thin, beautiful Asian woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I don't want to crush your dream, but that's never going to happen. Uh, that's never going to happen. <laughs> and I would never alter my body, uh, which can happen now. How scary is that? If yeah. I had the money and I wanted that bad enough, I could make it happen. Yeah. I wouldn't do it. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I That's love you hilarious. guys. Yeah, I love you. Uh, let's see. What are some of the things on your bucket list that you have yet to cross off? Um, I'm going to be really boring on this. I don't really have a, a bucket list per se. Um, I do want to go to, to Europe. That is something I've always wanted to do. I would like to visit Italy and England mm -hmm. and Scotland and Ireland, you know, that little grouping, yeah. um, maybe France, but not as much. Then there's some things that I like about France. It's a, apparently a beautiful city of lights, you know, that, that whole yeah. thing. Romantic. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, I don't really have a bucket list. I don't know. Maybe I should have one, but I don't. Yeah, let's work on that. <laughs> All right. Uh, I would. I will. I'll go on that trip with you to Europe. Well, I would sure really love to go to Prague. Prague is one of on my bucket list for sure. Yeah. And it's, it's the um, Art Nouveau architecture that I'm obsessed with. I love Art Nouveau and I love Alphonse Mucha. He kind of started that whole uh, Art Nouveau, illustrating posters, you know, plays and mm -hmm. different ad advertisements back in the day. Yeah. Um, so that's definitely, and another one is to travel around and see all the national parks. Um, even with the, you know, missing 411 thing going on, I <laughs> would try to have yeah. some precautions in place, but, yeah. uh, the photographer in me would just absolutely love to go visit the national parks and take pictures and, yeah. uh, see some Sasquatch maybe, and, um, try not to disappear. Right. <laughs> in a national <laughs> park. Exactly. <laughs> Missing. I'm talking along as you're talking <laughs> off the mic here, and, and you're like, "I want to go to national parks." I'm like, "No, no, you don't." Like, I'm, go to I'm like, "Oh, you'll see." No, more no, you don't. That. No, no, you don't. Oh wow! I'm sorry. I was talking right along with you. I love it. I'm like, oh, you shouldn't no. have muted yourself. I would have loved it. <laughs> oh no! Oh loud! Oh, oh no! Oh man. Yeah, the one thing, if that doesn't happen, if I don't get to see the national parks, I'll be okay. I'll be like, okay, that's yeah. probably a good, good idea. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Let's oh, see. Oh, my goodness. Oh, this is a good one. Um, oh, hold on, hold on. Let wait. me, um, from the chat. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Jamie Gray says, I gave up my dream of being a forensic scientist. Oh. And uh, Annette says, finding my person. Oh. Mm -hmm. We want that for you too, Annette. Yeah. And Nez. And then said, agreed. Jamie, Jamie's bucket list is skydiving, traveling to Europe, or Australia. Oh, Australia oh, too. And I didn't yeah, used to want to do that. Add that to then, our bucket list. Yeah. Then, <laughs> then we met Glenn. We met and all of Glenn. it went to hell. <laughs> then I'm like, oh, we got to go yeah, now. <laughs> we got to go. Go ahead, Jen. Oh, no, no. Thanks for popping in there and reading some of the chats. Yep. Um, what are your most treasured possessions and why? Hold on now. I didn't do my bucket list. Oh, oh sorry, Ness. Truck. Back up. Hey. Reverse. <laughs> you go, girl. My bucket yes. list, of course, Australia. I've always wanted to go to Tibet and uh, spend a little time uh, working the base camp of Everest. 
and just be there to welcome people, to listen to them, to cook for them, simple first aid, you know, document stuff for them or get photos for you know, just just to be there for a while and and interact with the people. You might be the last living person someone talks to or you know it's a very profound place to be very powerful i'd love to be there for a while wonderful yeah. i love your answer thank you all, all right. right uh what are your most treasured possessions and why i'm gonna say friends yeah that's um, a good answer of course, I have a couple, you know, like photographs and some things from childhood that I treasure, but the, it's just stuff. It's going to come yep. and go. Yep. Um, I think friends and the people close to us are more important than anything material. Yeah. But I do understand we all have, uh, you know, little trinkets or things that, that we hold dear to us. We know whether it's been given to us by a special person. Like I have this really cute uh, rabbit brush. It's this mm -hmm. brush where the, the head of the brush is the rabbit's yep. head I've seen and it. the ears are the handle. And one of my aunts from Louisiana gave it to me. I was admiring it at her house and was working on a children's book that had a rabbit in it. And I was telling her about it. And she was like, I told her, I was like, this is so cute. I love this brush. And she said, take it. It's yours. Aww. So that's, that's one of a couple things that I have and it's just treasured. Oh, wonderful. I lo love that answer. Um, I'll tell a quick story. And that is that when I was a kid, I would occasionally lose a favorite toy and I would obsess about it. This is who, who I was as a kid. Tenacious. I, I, <laughs> I remember how it felt when I couldn't find a toy. I don't remember specifically what toys they were that I lost, but I would bug my mom, you know, to help me look. I would look everywhere several times. Even after I already looked there, I would look there again. Um, that happened uh, uh, enough when I was a kid that I had to let go because uh, it was just, I didn't want to be obsessed over things like that. Um, you're right. I am still tenacious, but uh, I had to, to not care as much about uh, possessions. And to this day, uh, unfortunately to the other end, I have let things go that I wish I had kept like my uh, super friends that I had when I was a kid. They're not worth anything because they're all, they've all been played with. But if I ever had kids, I would want them to, to play with them and stuff. And um, the collection of Matchbox cars that I had, I had like two full, huge carrying cases of Matchbox cars that I collected over the years. Let those go. I've let go of more things that I wish I hadn't. But I'm glad I'm not um, super obsessed about possessions. And uh, Jen, you're not a possession. But I mean, I care about friends too. They are... Uh, important, but uh, I have to just be honest and say that you are my most prized possession. Not that no. I own you, but uh, absolutely most important. Thing <laughs> to me. Thanks. Oh, uh, hello to Wisconsin Greg who popped in. And hey, Greg. He says he's sorry he's late, but that's okay. As I always say, um, you can come at the beginning, come in the middle, come at the end. We're just glad you came. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. Yep. Possessions. Um, I, I, you know, I really can't put people in that category. I can't even put the interpersonal relationships in that category necessarily, because you know, I think those are things that are just something that you are experiencing and that you don't own and you don't control necessarily. I mean, sure. you kind of ride it out in in the way I, I'm thinking of it. Um, I, I'm glad to be a part of the lives of uh, the people that I am, I guess, is a, if I can phrase it another way. Possession doesn't really sit right with me we, what do we possess in this world what do we come in with what do we go out with um so the love that i have for people and the love that people have for me the love that god has for me 
if I can possess those things, then that would be my favorite. Okay, sure. Awesome. And just to be clear, I'm not saying that people are possessions. No, no. <laughs> it's no, just when I, I think I, I about just, treasured things. Yeah. Just my, you know, that's my view yeah. on it. You know, yeah. yeah. I get it. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, hello, Wisconsin. Yeah, Wisconsin, Greg. Um, Maybe one more and we'll close it out. Yeah. I'm trying to find one that we haven't done. Let's see. Hmm. Thank you guys all, all of you for uh, coming tonight. This has been really fun for me. I hope you guys uh, have enjoyed it too. Uh, but it means a lot that you uh, take time out of your Sunday, Sunday, Sunday to come and visit with us. Yes, I would second that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, okay, let's leave on this one, I think. Uh, what makes you feel the most alive? And you guys feel free to answer in the chat too. We'd love to hear your your answers. I would say love. Yeah. Being able to uh, feel love, to express love, to love other people is just one of the most magnificent things. Yeah. Um, you know, when it really comes down to it, that's the most important thing. Uh, the love of God, loving God, loving his children. Mm -hmm. Um. And there's so many things that you can do to express love with people. It's not just this one thing. It's multifaceted. Yeah. And uh, and I just love it. I love yeah. love. <laughs> love, love. Marisa? Repeat it again for me, please. Oh, shoot. I think I put it back in the thing. Um, do you remember what it was, Jason? Because I started putting the the cards back. Uh, well, I, I did just a second ago. <laughs> I was ready to answer. Now <laughs> Shoot. I blank, blanked out. Oh, uh, you um, said your answer was love. Maybe we can uh, reverse engineer. Oh, it was what? Okay, here it is. What makes you feel the most alive? There you go. Jesus. Jesus Yay! makes me feel the most alive. Yes. Oh, love that. What about you, Jace? I have to be boring here and, and agree with your <laughs> answer, Jen. It's, it's love. And as you mentioned, the love of God, the love of, uh, to, to steal uh, Maurice's answer, the love of Christ, um, but also the love I have for you and the love I have for my family and nieces and nephews and friends, um, and particularly about the, the romantic or marriage type love, you know, as I mentioned, I was praying for my future spouse, and and that was uh, that was something I um, really, really uh, desired in my heart. And um, after my divorce, I had let it go, and so I've lived on both sides. I lived in anticipation of having that kind of relationship, and then had it had what I thought should be it, and it wasn't, and then had didn't have it. I mean, I had love for my friends and stuff, obviously, but this particular type of love um, and then have it uh, for the first time now. And uh, yeah, it's it's super important. I, I feel alive and by it. I, I feel more love for other people, which also makes me feel more alive. I feel uh, a stronger relationship to God and his son. Um it just flows through me and I, I am just amazed by it every day. I'm just amazed at the, uh, how it feels for me. Love that. That's it. Thanks guys. Yeah. I'm ready for spaghetti. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it rhymes. It's become yeah. a tradition of ours having spaghetti after TSL on Sunday it's nights. Wonderful. <laughs> um, okay. Well, thank you guys for being here for game night. And thank you for everyone that participated. And it's okay if you didn't. Um, thank you to everyone uh, lurking. It's not in the chat or listening to the playback. Um, we appreciate you. Appreciate you uh, taking time out of whenever you're listening to this to um, give us a listen. Thank you so much. And uh, next week, Jen will be doing a uh, doing the write up on patriarchy. So we have that to look forward to. And uh, I think Glenn said he had some ideas uh, for broadcast. So Marisa did one. Uh, we did game night tonight. Uh, then Jen's going to do it next week. 
And then so we'll fill you in on what's going to happen the week after that. But I wish Glenn were here for this. I, I love when we ask questions that make him a little, you know, uncomfortable. Uh, he has to figure out a way to answer. And so maybe he'll, uh, <laughs> when he listens to this, maybe he'll backfill some of these answers. I doubt it, but we'll see. <laughs> quick, quick impersonation. Or I see how that's really bit. Okay. <laughs> 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 I love you, Glenn. I miss you. That was wonderful. <laughs> that was pretty good. Um, for, for that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad for you. No, not at all. That was good. Uh, for those of, of you that pray, uh, please pray for me uh, tomorrow. It's nothing bad. It's all good. Uh, I start my first day of training for my promotion. Uh, it is still going to be the same job, but more responsibility and uh, uh, title change and a little more pay, which we've been praying about for a long time. It's really going to help us with how high the prices are and everything. And we've really been we've been making it, uh, thanks to God. But uh, it's 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 been it's been tough. So that will uh, help in that area. Uh, but tomorrow I'm going to see. I work in an office. Um, uh, for uh, customer care. And uh, part of being a specialist is uh, two days of training at one of the actual stores. So I'll get to see every aspect of uh, what what customers go through when they come into a store and what the employees there do. And so I'll get to operate some heavy machinery tomorrow. So just pray for safety for me and that uh, I learn what I need to learn as part of this uh, new job. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I'll say good night to everyone and, uh, thanks again for being a part of tonight's broadcast and for listening to playback and those who lurked as, uh, Maurice always says, and I will pass it over to Jen to say good night. All right. Um, I will also say pray for me guys, cause I'm headed to the only ocularist clinic or office here in Charlotte tomorrow morning to introduce myself and try to get a meeting with, um, the main guy there to try to get a mentor and someone that can help me get into this line of work of ocularistry. So, and this is a hand painting prosthetic eyes for people that have lost eyes from injury or disease. Mm -hmm. So I'm very excited about it and, uh, but nervous. <laughs> yeah, sure. So say a prayer guys for me, I'd really, really appreciate it. And this was so wonderful. And I'm, I'm so grateful for everybody that answered questions in the chat. Um, you know, this show isn't just about us. We, we love getting to know you guys. And um, these particular questions were great. Just gives us some insight on who you all are. So we appreciate it. Have a good week. If y'all have any prayer requests, you can pop them in the chat and we will make sure to lift you up in prayer. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Jen. Uh, last but certainly not least, I'll ask Marisa to, to close us off and uh, uh, say goodbye to the peoples, please. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jen. And wow, what a fun time tonight. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It flew by. It really did. But uh, it was a lot of fun. I liked this particular deck of cards or game, whatever this was. I would look forward to doing this again if you guys wanted to do it. I'm certainly up for it. This was very enjoyable. And oh, thank you, everybody, who participated. It was a lot of fun. All right. Well, Glenn, we love you. We miss you. And we're looking forward to having him back next week. And thank everybody who came by and watched and lurked and shared it out or catches the replay. And God willing, we'll see you next Sunday, 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 right here on True Story Live. Good night and God bless.